Right, the scoops are back together, uh, and what I'm going to do this evening is just to do a quick calibration check on it, just to make sure that it's working okay. Uh, also make sure those buttons are working correctly. Um, you can see the scope here. This is the Ballantine uh, 6125B um, six, uh, oscilloscope calibrator. Uh, it's pretty old, it's sort of from the 70s. It um, was used to calibrate the old analog scopes back in the day. Um, but it's a great piece of kit because it's a it's got a uh, it has got its own internal oven actually a crystallized uh, oven control crystal oscillator, but I am running it at the moment on the external um, oven control crystal oscillator uh, just to, because I know that that oscillator is particularly accurate um, and it's still in the warm up phase but it should be warmed up within the next couple of minutes it should be stabilized. So basically what the, the Ballantine does, it gives you an accurate volts per division um, reading for DC voltage for doing the uh, uh, amplifier uh, and attenuator adjustments. And we've got an adjustment over this side for doing the time base and uh, sweep free, uh, speeds and things like that. It's also got um, the ability to produce an accurate DC output level, which is nice. It's got a couple of other functions on the bottom hang, right hand corner here that uh, also do... Uh, High, very fast rise times and things like that, but all I'm interested in really is just making sure that the uh, the scope's attenuators are set accurately, and we can rely on it for accurate frequency measurement. So let's power up the uh, scope. First of all, I think I've just realised I want to the power supply to the. flare. Okay, scope's come up. Looks okay. I've got the uh, graticule turned off at the moment, but we can just put that back on. Um, so let's get the, uh, the grid back on so you can see that. The brightness up a bit. Just check the view, find that you can see it. I've got a bit of reflection off the uh, lights there, which is a really annoying. Um, I can find a bit of light source. There's always the problem when you're Doing video and that. that's better, isn't it? You can see that a bit easy. Okay, so let's do a few basic function checks on it just to make sure it's working. We use channel one, uh, and we'll feed in a. Uh, let's have a look. So we'll feed in a 0.1 volt peak to peak signal, and that should be 10 kilohertz. It's 0.1. One. Yes, point 0.1 of a volt, sorry. So there we go. And you can see that's fine, that looks good on that, that channel. Uh, good fast rise time. Um, I don't know how good the rise times are on this. and I'm, uh, I'm, I think most of these are supposed to be terminated into 50 ohms, but we'll, uh, we'll check that in a minute. Let's go to channel 2. trigger on channel 2 and likewise that's good I'm not worried about the frequency at the moment all I'm worried about is the, the volts per division so this should be half a volt per division uh, uh, 0.2 a volt division sorry so 0 0.2 0 0.2 volts that's one division there that's, that's right clear that looks working that's working fine so it looks like the uh, there's nothing wrong with the uh, attenuator or anything like that. Let's put some more volts into it. Okay, let's. Uh, where are we on now? We're on 10 volts per division. Uh, there you go, and you want 5 volts here, so yeah, 10 volts per division, that's fine. So that's working okay. So that's good. We'll just go back to channel 1 again and trigger off channel 1. Turn channel 2 off. Right, let's do some frequency checks now. So we're going over to the other side of the Ballantine and we're going to the marker output and then we're going to select our frequency of 
um, let's go for two millisecond time. So I'm going to cut decouple it to AC. Turn my trace on. There we go. And we should have pulses at uh, two milliseconds, and as you can see here, two milliseconds per division, and that's coming up nicely on the script. That shows the accuracy of that's good. Let's go a bit faster. It's point one of a millisecond, which would be what would that be? Ten nanoseconds, wouldn't it? Would that be ten nanoseconds? Uh, microseconds? No, it'd be hundred microseconds, wouldn't it? Point one, is that right? Anyway. Yeah, 100 microseconds, there you go. And then you can see that's good as well. And it's two microseconds. Still good, no problem at all. Let's see how far this can go before you've seen the roll off on the scope. This is a particularly useful piece of kit for checking scopes, actually. Um, right, running into possibly a bit of problem with the uh, Ballantyne not being able to run at that sort of frequency anymore because it probably needs a bit of servicing. Um, let's go back one. And this should be half a microsecond. There we go. 500 nanoseconds. Just adjust up at horizontal position slightly. And it's spot on as you see on each line. Let's try it a bit faster. And we're still holding on. The attenuation, the levels drop right back now because obviously our frequency is um, exceeding the limit of the what the scope can actually do. But let's just see what, what it comes up with. 200 nan. So what frequency is 200 nan? Let's have a look. Uh, time frequency. And that is measuring at... Come on. Oh, 5 meg. Okay, so it's not as fast as I was thinking. Let's look a bit faster. So it's obviously rolling off. It doesn't specify the level. Um, it just specifies the, um, the the frequency. So let's go to as fast as this will go. So uh, should be ten nanoseconds. It's gone to a sort of like a sine wave now. It should be twenty nanoseconds. Yep, that's twenty nanoseconds, which is fifty megahertz, and. The maximum this will do, and you can see the waveform is getting quite noisy now. 100 megahertz. Uh, yep, and that's right. So, looks like the scope's absolutely fine. Um, we'll try a few other features just to make sure they all work. Uh, let's put. Right, let's try making sure our source and external line so it sweeps. Synchronising from line, that looks like it's fine. External is from the external port, uh, which isn't being connected. Um, let's check this. The, um, Mega zoom's working fine. You can see that you can adjust it. It's actually frozen now. There's no cable connected to the to the uh, scope. And it stored this in memory, and it's allowing me to adjust the free uh, the uh, trace uh, with using the data that it has stored in its memory. Uh, what else have we got? We've got auto level for triggers, triggering, so if I adjust the level it sh you'll see the trigger level, this is the trigger level line, you see it going up the trace, and on auto level when it gets to the top it will just drop back down again to find its own level. In auto you can adjust it wherever you want, there you go, most, most of the time I run them in auto level, and normal that's working fine. A coupling AC or DC, if it, it takes into account the DC level of the waveform or, the, or not. You've got reject for low frequency and high frequency. I've got that off at the moment. Uh, basically, it rejects, um, it, the trigger ignores any low frequency instability or any high frequency noise. And it's got a noise filter as well, which is basically to stop it triggering on sort of glitches and high frequency glitches and things like that. Fairly. Um, Fairly straightforward, and it takes a bit of fiddling about with to get it to, to get it to work. Uh, horizontal mode delayed, so you've got a double time base. It's pretty better if I turn the grid off here, so you can see the grid off. So it's like an expanded version of that. It's like an expanded time base. You can see there. So you can zoom in on it, which is quite nice. Never use that actually. Hardly ever use these menus at all. Um, 
what else have we got? That's how auto scale works. Back into main again, XY for the lithogist mode, ROL mode, um, which is basically the same as all the HPs have ROL mode, as do Tektronics, but they just call it something different. Um, so that's that works fine. And we've got storage areas for storing our um, favourite settings in and things like that. It's got a mass function for uh, adding and subtracting or dividing from the uh, other channel, which is quite useful, especially if you're checking for sort of like phase differences and things. If you turn that on, you can spot straight away any, any phase shifting and things like that. Horizontal level, position should I say, uh, time base hold off all works. So it looks like it's working fine. And uh, from, someone asked me how long he, I thought I'd expect the uh, repair to last. And to be honest with you, we've, I've repaired one of these scopes uh, at work with the same modification, uh, actually the same silver paint. Um, and I think the reason why it came off on the, with the last person hadn't put the uh, paints on properly, and it might have been a different paint. Um, but it's a, it's a known trick of the trade, you know. When those carbon tracks wear out, just put a bit of silver paint on there, and well, as you can see here, it, it works fine. So that's a nice scope. Um, I've still got the five or six double O up for sale. I've got it on Gumtree at the moment. Uh, hopefully, someone will uh, buy it from me. Uh, and also I've still got this Tektronics, this other Tektronics to, um, I need to repair and I've got a chip coming for that hopefully this week uh, and then once I get that one going I'll probably put that up for sale as well because I've still got the other, two thousand, uh, the other Tektronics high frequency um, scope I'd like to keep this one here and I'd like to keep the other one as well the Iwatsu uh, will probably go to uh, eBay or, or Gumtree at the same point. The trouble is, uh, all these old bits of equipment, I can't, I'm loath to throw them out, and being a hoarder, it's very difficult. But sooner or later, you realise how many oscilloscopes do you actually need, and you really, the answer is you need one. Um, but I can't have one, I need, I need two at least. Um, so this one will be staying because, as I said before, I've used this bit. Uh, quite a long time over a long period of time at work these this particular model I, I love them they're great scope um, the Tektronics I I realize is a better higher performance scope uh, but it's not so nice to use probably because I'm not familiar with it but I'll hold on to it because it has got the, the over double the bandwidth of this this scope you know it's got a higher sample rate and it's also goes up to 300 megahertz so could be useful in certain certain uh, areas Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, more to come.